Hey Squishies, back again with another vlog. This is Dirty Pair, uh, episode 4. Mm, title is The Amazing uh, Pursuit Smells Like Cheesecake and Death. Like, that's just one of the greatest titles I've ever heard. It tells you nothing about what you're getting in for, except that it's gonna be amazing. Like, there's no way you can have a title like that and have the results not be amazing. But it provides no information whatsoever about what they're going to be. Just that they're going to be ridiculous and wow, did this episode deliver on ridiculous. Um, it was basically ridiculous chase scene piled on top of ridiculous chase scene. Uh, it was pure farce. Mm. Just misunderstandings piled on top of misunderstandings resulting in people chasing other people and chaos. Uh, I loved the, the inclusion of uh, like this pair of female wrestlers uh, the called I think Elegance uh, which is just clearly, like with their hairstyles and everything, is clearly uh, referring to the, uh, I forget if they were called straight up the Lovely Angels or the Beautiful Angels or something like that, the wrestling team that Kay and Yuri are actually based on. Because they're based on a like real life uh, Japanese professional wrestling team from like the late 70s, early 80s, somewhere around there. Um, and... They're basically evil Kay and Yuri. Um, only the one really gets any characterization. The other one's just sort of there's a sidekick type. But I mean, she's just Kay's hairstyle in blue. Like, copy, basically a palette swap of Kay in blue. Um, and yeah, basically Kay's evil twin. Like, you know, professional wrestler, violent streak. The way she, like, taunts her brother is very similar to the way Kay, like, puts down men that come onto her, like the man that comes onto her later in the episode. Um, and I honestly was expecting something different. I was expecting, like, because the brother seemed to be very resentful of the sister, and I was expecting it would end up being something like, oh, you know, He's been weaker his whole life, so he created this drug to try to make himself stronger, and his sister doesn't like it because, like, it's really just him being petty about the fact that he's the boy, yet he's the weaker sibling. Something like that, you know? Um, because we've got professional sports and basically sci-fi steroids in the same episode, like, where are you gonna go with that? Mm. But I like where it did end up going, because it meant we just got the nonsense. Um, given the, like, suits and, like, the blue suits and trilby hats and so forth, that the, and sunglasses, that the uh, guys chasing Kay and Yuri uh, that were working for the uh, wrestlers, given those, I think... Probably safe to say that this episode took some inspiration from the Blues Brothers. I'm fairly sure that it was made after the Blues Brothers, because I'm pretty sure the Blues Brothers was really early 80s. And this would be more around mid to late 80s. So, I think... If I am correct that this was made after the Blues Brothers, then, that was def then it is definitely referencing the Blues Brothers in this episode. Um, because you've got the same kind of, like, just piling of misunderstanding on misunderstanding and the car chase that gets bigger and more ridiculous as it goes, and the constant, massive pile-ups everywhere, just cars smashing into cars. Um, right up to somehow they get ridiculously high up. Um, there's that one bit where the uh, Illinois Nazis go off... I forget if it's a bridge or what, but... All of a sudden, somehow, they're miles in the air as they're falling. Just ridiculous distance. Um, it, it's... 
like clearly a deliberate bad special effect uh, because they're way too high up. Um, like it's more like the car got dropped out of an airplane than it fell off a bridge. Uh, and that's kind of what's going on here because like all of a sudden they're ridiculously high up in uh, what I believe is the same structure from the first episode and they're still repairing it. I guess that's just where Kay and Yuri live. Um, but so you've got that ridiculousness and then that girder thing where you've got the cops trying to keep it in position uh, by driving back and forth to keep it from tilting too far and the construction worker being like, oh, whatever, I'm just going to go get lunch. You guys work this out. Um, whereas before, like, and that's after several minutes of being unhelpful by yelling out generic, like, driving advice that you might hear from your driving instructor, not like, how do you keep this girder from toppling? Um, my favorite was when he was telling them, you know, blink only twice in every 10 second period. Um, or, you know, so you had that going on, and then you had Kay and Yuri trying to catch the cat and hold on to the cat while also fighting, um, the two professional wrestlers. And look, any fight sequence where the hero is holding something so that they have to toss it up in the air and, like, fight and then catch it, that's going to be a good fight sequence. Like, that is one of my favorite things in, like, a fight sequence. Um, it's just endlessly funny. And whatever it is the hero is holding, you know? Uh, in this case, a what turned out to be the wrong cat, because apparently there's two identical pink cats that love cheesecake in the city. Um, you know... The, you know, that's possibly the funniest gag in the whole thing, that this was all completely pointless because Mugi used the network of, like, street cats that, of course, he has, um, to find, uh, Malatesta, which, what an amazing name for a cat that is. Um, like, just, it sounds like the Wicked Sorceress from a, like, mid-tier Disney animated movie. Um, like, it's just, or like, a secondary villain added to one of the Saturday morning cartoons they made based on the princess movies in the 90s. You know, like the Aladdin cartoon or the Hercules cartoon or one of those. Does Hercules count as a princess movie? I guess, does Megara count as one of the Disney princesses? I mean, the princess isn't the main character, but Jasmine isn't the main character of Aladdin either, so... Hmm. Anyway. Um, those. Like, Malatesta just sounds like a second-tier villain that got made up for one of those. It's perfection as the name. Like, it was a ridiculous over-the-top name, the kind that people sometimes give their cats. Um, and, yeah, this was just ridiculous fun, and really kind of laying out just how varied this show can be, you know? Um, just an episode or two ago, uh, we were, you know, deadly serious space battle in, uh, spacesuits on a ship that was about to explode. Now we're chasing a lost cat um, in ridiculous car chases. Uh, it's just great, you know, that the same show can go between these things and still feel like the same show. Because what really anchors it is the attitude of Kay and Yuri and the connection between Kay and Yuri. Um, I love the scene early on when, uh, I think it's like the first or second scene of the episode when Yuri comes into their apartment and tosses an apple to Kay and Kay catches it without even looking, eats it while they're talking, and then throws the core and without even looking, Yuri like nudges the uh, trash can with her foot and catches the apple in it. And that's like the level to which they are in sync. 
And yet a few minutes later in the episode, when we get the ridiculous, like, wedding and honeymoon sequence, um, like, Kay forgets to tell Yuri that she's already been there, and just kind of assumes Yuri will know or will not go there or something, uh, resulting in, like, Kay and Yuri both going, and it's just complete ridiculousness, you know? Um, that whole sequence is just really, really funny, and it really kind of sums up these characters, that they can be that in sync, and yet at the same time have communication failures on that level. Um, like, that in sync is there at the beginning, and communication failure to the level of the, like, honeymoon sequence. Um, which, let's talk about that for a minute, because that was amazing, too. Um, that was... Like, that was one of the funniest parts of a very funny episode. Um, when, like... Kay comes crashing in. First of all, the way the guy's like, let's take a bath together. And the one was like, okay, you go first. Like, completely missing it. I mean, first of all, just the ridiculousness of let's take a bath together and thumb wrestle. Unless there's some kind of 80s Japanese euphemism I don't know about, um, that is quite possibly the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in of anyone suggesting doing on their honeymoon. Like, that's thumb wrestle. Um, and then, to follow it up with the joke about, let's go take a bath together. Okay, you go first. Like, the girl just completely misses what he's trying to say. Uh, setting us up for the more serious misunderstanding when Kay comes barging in and smashes the door down trying to get to the guy. And of course, what is the new bride going to think, except that this is a jilted ex-lover? Um, that this is the other woman. And, of course, she's upset. And then just as she's calming down, of course, the guy goes to actually take his bath. And, of course, his face cloth, for no reason, is a plush cat that looks like Malatesta. Because why wouldn't it be? You know, that's kind of the essence of farce, is... As ridiculous misunderstanding piles on top of ridiculous misunderstanding, we become more and more willing to accept absurd coincidences. You know? um, I typically point to the importance of being earnest as the perfect farce. If you have never seen that play or read it, do so, because it's amazing. And one of the interesting things about it is that the ridiculousness of it builds up to the point that by the end, when you find out that, oh, just coincidentally, everything works out so that everything works out perfectly for everyone in this massive collision, um, you accept it. Because by this point, why not? So many ridiculous things have happened. Why not a ridiculous coincidence? And it's kind of the same here. Already, halfway through this episode, so much ridiculousness has happened that why shouldn't he be using a stuffed animal of a cat as a washcloth? Sure. And, of course, then Yuri barges in and screaming, and I think just one of those little perfect touches that, like, she looks back at the guy and screams again. Um, like, checking if he's still there? I, I don't know, but just one of those perfect little ridiculous touches. You know? Um, and then, of course, the woman wants a divorce. Uh, the other sequence I feel like I need to talk about because it was hilarious is just the concept of a hair bank. Like, obviously, obviously, they're making fun of sperm banks. They're riffing on the idea of sperm banks. Where, you know, uh, one of the things that they get used for, uh, and actually they, they get used for sperm and frozen embryos, and I think eggs as well, is that kind of store, like, there's the thing of giving sperm to a sperm bank that anyone can use, and then there's giving it so that if you need it later, like, with eggs, embryos, sperm, all that kind of stuff, um, for people who have, like, fertility issues or that kind of thing, um, or 
just, you know, I don't know, still want to be able to father children when they're old, which I guess is something somebody might want to do. Um, and I think it's more eggs than sperm uh, for that purpose. But yeah, just the idea of, oh, you know, combine that with like the idea of those hair transplant treatments where like they remove hair from, like for balding, uh, uh, men and women, actually, where they'll remove hair from one part of your body and the where it won't be missed as much, like your back or something, and it plant it in your scalp. Um, and then, of course, they just combine those. You know, collide those two ideas together and get something completely ridiculous. A place where you can store your hair so that in future it can be given back to you. Um, and actually, given that in this science fiction world, standards of beauty and grooming methods seem to be basically the same as our world. I can actually see that being more... Well, I guess I can see it both ways. Like, for women, like, and long-haired men, um, it's got to do, like, basically, you can damage your hair by over-combing, over-brushing. Um, Basically, every time, like, you pull on the comb and just completely yank a hair out, the hair is gone forever. And so over time, your hair just sort of gets thinner and thinner and thinner. Um, whereas for men, it's like a genetic... Tr and I think there's women who can be genetically bald as well, but for men, mostly it's genetic. Um, it's a genetic trigger that goes off at a certain point in your life uh, that you inherit from your, if I remember correctly, from your mother's male, like your mother's side of the family is where it comes from. Um, and it just causes the classic, like, ring of hair with bald spot. Like, bald spot on the crown of the head that spreads forward. Um, and I guess if you know, like I was going to say for, for a woman, like if you know that you're, that you've got long hair and you're going to comb it a lot, or men who have long hair, and you're going to, you know, have that risk, then it would make sense to store some up for later. But then, I guess the same is true for men that uh, have bald relatives that, you know, especially on your mother's side, that's like, oh, well, I should store some hair up for later because I'm going to lose it. I don't know. Regardless, it's a ridiculous concept. And I love the idea that, like, there's this secure vault full of people's hair. Um, or that the police are like, why is somebody robbing the hair vault? Oh, he's bald. That makes sense now. Um, or the fact that a robbery at the hair vault requires an entire lobby full of guard, uh, of police officers, which is, again, another, uh, uh, Blues Brothers reference, because when they get to, I think it's a bank or a mortgage company or something like that, where they have to deposit the check to save the orphanage, uh, actually, it might be a government office, it might be a tax thing, regardless, where they have to deposit the check to save the orphanage, um, the, like, when they come out, there's huge numbers of police officers and National Guard surrounding them. Just absurd numbers, because they have carved this path of destruction. Uh, here, it's just, oh, there's a robbery at the hair bank. Let's send five million police officers so that they're then in place so that we can have the ridiculous chase sequence with Kay and Yuri afterwards, I guess. But yeah, overall, this is just a fun, ridiculous episode that worked really well at being fun and ridiculous and just generally being a blast. All right. Uh, I'll see you all next time. Bye.